One of the goals I have with every dog that I train is to eventually have them responding to me off leash. So it's important that our dogs can respond off leash under distraction so that they can still have the freedom and the, the ability to go and run and play and exercise that they deserve when they come into our household. If we've only trained them on leash, they're going to be frustrated because they cannot expend that energy that is bound up inside them. They're at little athletes that live with us and they need to exercise to be happy and healthy. We would begin our, our training with a long light line on such as this here. It's quarter inch hollow braid polypropylene line. We don't want to go any heavier than, than a quarter inch. And we also want to make sure it's hollow braid because when it gets wet from the dew in the grass that it will not absorb the water and become a heavy anchor to the dog. We want the rope only to be there as a means of control, not as a means of restraining the dog or making it difficult for them to move around. If they're feeling that there's an anchor behind them, they're not going to act naturally when they're out working with us. So we would begin them with a long 12-foot line on. If you have an extremely fast dog that likes to bolt on you, you can go even longer than this, go even up to 25 or 30 feet to begin with, just to be safe so that you can always get a hold of them. Begin with a few commands in a close quarter situation where you can always, again, be in control of this line. Then start to take the dog for walks, allow them to roam 20 or 30 or 40 feet from you. And you want to do it in non-distracted environments uh, first and then move into situations where there are more distractions. If your dog is responding about 95% of the time under the great distractions that you'll encounter, then it's time to move up to uh, a shorter line. So we go to one that's about this length here. It's just long enough to hang out the end of, uh, beyond the end of the dog. And again, we work in our situations under distractions and finding that the dog is responding to us again about 95 to 99% of the time. And at that point, then we know we're confident to move to an even shorter line. And this little line here can hang on the dog for, for a few months if we want to, just so that we've always got the ability to get control, to, get, to be able to make a correction with our, with our leash and our, and our choke chain. So we've got two hands, we can make our quick snap if we need to. Now, when we find that the dog again is responding very well under distractions with this short line on, then we can try moving with no line at all. So at any point, if you feel that you're having a struggle, if you've gone to a shorter line and the dog is beginning to have more confidence or get a little cocky and, and to test you, then go back to your longer line until again that you're, you're seeing that the dog is, is humble to your control. Move into the stages, weaning the dog off until you feel confident. Don't go ahead of your own confidence that um, you want to be certain that when you eventually take this line off completely, that your dog is going to respond under a dangerous situation. You don't want them to get hurt. You don't want them to see a cat across the road and go bolting because they feel free. One of the biggest mistakes people make is that they go from the long line to suddenly to have no line at all and they wonder why the dog won't respond. And they spend an hour chasing the dog around the car or the bushes or the neighborhood because the dog knows when that line comes off, if it comes off too soon, that we don't have the ability to get a hold of them and to reinforce what it is that we've asked them to do. Because in most cases, dogs want to do their own thing. They'd rather go chase a cat or, or, or grab some uh, smells in the air and take off chasing those things. So be patient with what you're doing. Have some fun with it, and in the end, course of a, a three, four, five, six weeks, that you will have confidence that under any situation, you can have total control on your dog, and that will give them the freedom and the enjoyment and the happiness and all those things that they want out of life. So everybody's going to be a little bit happier in the end if we do things properly. As we start to go for walks that are leading towards off-leash work with our dog, we would begin by having our dog on the long training line. And as they start to move away from us, they get 10 or 15 feet away, a lot of people tend to panic. The dog is further away from them maybe than they've been used to. Now what we want to watch for, if we've done our other work with our down command and we're getting our responses and so forth, that the dog is starting to have a regard for us. There will be a natural distance that the dog will uh, uh, sort of stay around us at. 
and it's generally around 40 feet with the average dog. So what we want to do is as we start to walk down the trail, the dog is stopping to sniff something. Don't be too quick to jump on the dog saying, come on, let's go, let's go. If we do, what we're going to find is that the dog is going to feel like we're nagging at it. It's not getting the freedom that it wants, the opportunity to smell the, the bush or whatever. So carry on walking. Just go silently. Keep marching forward, and you will see at about 40 feet, maybe you know, give or take a, a little bit on that, the dog will look up, and if you keep moving, the dog will automatically catch up to you. And they may go ahead of you about the same distance. And just again, hold back, just wait that extra little time before you say anything. See what the dog's response is going to be at this point. And again, we want to have uh, laid the groundwork with some other commands so that we know by the time we get here, the dog is going to be naturally sticking around. The less you say to them on these walks when the dog is back and forth like this, the more uh, chance you're going to have a response when you do speak. If you're constantly saying something to them, it's going to go in one ear and out the other because they're going to say, oh, I was just about to come anyway, sort of leave me alone, give me some space. On anything that we're doing when it comes to off-leash, if the dog is not responding again, just remember that we need to say our command one time, give the dog two seconds to respond, and then go in and make a correction. So as your dog is falling behind you, you're walking, if you get to that 40-foot point, you've given him his time and his distance. When you call him, you clap your hands and you say, let's go. Do it while you're continuing to move forward so that when the dog looks up, he realizes that your motion is to move forward and he'll follow that. Uh, as opposed to stopping, staring at him, clapping and looking at him and saying, come on, let's go. And he's looking at you and you're looking at him and it becomes this standoff keep moving and then once you've taken a few more steps and you've given the dog a couple of seconds to respond if he's not responding then you can run back make your correction um, you know tug him along and and drop the line and then carry on moving so the next time you speak you're going to see that the dog is going to respond if it's a down command off off leash at a distance and things again anywhere you're not getting a response look at the patterns that you're working with the methods are you sticking to the program are you reinforcing what you're saying every time in other ways? And are you disciplining uh, firmly enough? As the distractions increase, when the dog begins to move away from you, remember the dog's desire to attend to those distractions is going to increase, so your corrections will also have to increase. Anywhere they're being stubborn, it's not that the dog doesn't understand you. As long as you're speaking clearly and loudly enough, it's that they're just simply saying, I don't want to. So you, you make your corrections increase, and your dog will start to respond. And the idea, again, is to move beyond having to correct them. Increase firmly enough so that a few days or a few weeks down the road, there's no corrections needed. Your dog simply knows that when you speak, you always mean business. You've proven that every single time without a doubt. And then it's just simply a, a, a verbal communication with your dog, and you have one that responds all the time in any situation.